unboxing and setting up the key croc this time on Hack 5. Hello and welcome to Hack 5, I'm Darren Kitchen and on this dose of techno lust we are setting up the key croc for the very first time so let's just dive right in and right here in fact I have right over from the Hack 5 warehouse our very own little key croc. He's so cute. I, re I really feel like he's going to catch that keyboard at one point. Anyway, so admire the packaging, toss that aside, grab yourself your key croc, and let's get started. This uh, little quick start guide will walk us through three steps, and let's just go ahead and do those together. So, first step is to plug in line between a keyboard and a computer. Uh, for the rest of these examples, I am going to be using a wireless keyboard just because it fits on my desk with all of the other equipment here and that works with a little USB nubbin receiver as you might imagine so that's gonna be the same whether you're using a wired keyboard but I just so happen to prefer this little wireless one because it fits on my desk uh, so let's go ahead and do that so we got our key crack here let's plug it in line this is uh, connected to my computer here so I'll just plug that in, the light turns on, that's cool. And it's uh, gonna go through a few different light up sequences as it boots for the next few seconds. And uh, one thing that you'll uh, notice is that uh, if we actually just skip ahead and flip the card open, obviously you'll read all of this stuff clearly, um, that uh, we show the LED indications here. So green is booting, it'll go red if there's an error, it'll go cyan when it is setting up the Wi-Fi, it's gonna go magenta when it's setting up the key logging, it's gonna blink blue if it's in arming mode just like most other HackFi devices, yellow if the disk is full, and white if there is no keyboard attached. You can see it's white, so let's attach our keyboard. And the light goes off. Okay, great. So, what is step two? Step two, type as usual. All right, so um, let's type as usual. The keystrokes are going to go ahead and get recorded to uh, the key croc in this case. So let's grab our target keyboard, as it were, and flip over here. Now, I'm using my Mac for this uh, example, but we could also use our Windows or Linux machines, and we'll be using those a little later on. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, type the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. All right. One other thing that you might want to test is type the word hello, <laughs> and then we get world. That's kind of exciting. Now, the final step is to press the arming button. So let's take a look at that. There is a hidden button on the back of this unit. You can kind of see it there. And what it says is press the arming button with a paper clip or a SIM card tool. So let's do that. I like to use a little SIM card tool. So just straight in, not at an angle. Just press it straight in and click it for about one second. And the LED will start blinking blue to indicate that it's in arming mode. All right, so with that, let's uh, come over to our computer because what's going to happen here in just a moment, there it is, we get a new drive called Keycroc. So let's take a look at that. We've got our drive here, and you'll notice if we go into the loot folder, we have a character log, a raw log, and a matches log. So let's just take a look at that character log, and you'll see, there we go, uh, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog and you can actually see where I'm holding shift, where I'm hitting enter, where I typed hello. Notice you don't see it say world right here because I didn't type world. In fact, it was the key croc that typed world. If we take a look at this matches log, you'll see that at this timestamp it matched hello defined in this payload right here called example payload and it executed the payload because it matched what it was expecting. You can also dive into the raw log. These are actually the scan codes and this is kind of a more advanced feature but we'll get into this later in the series uh, and that's kind of fun stuff. If we actually go and check out that payload, that example payload that executed, uh, you can see, let me make this a little bit larger. All it does is match on the word hello and if you type hello it's going to execute the payload which is to say it's going to type world. Yeah. I know, you, you just, you literally just learned <laughs> like 
a third of no, no I'm kidding I'm kidding there's so much more but that you, you learn the basics real quick just by example in fact if you want to learn by more examples you can go and check out the uh, library folder here and there are examples for all sorts of, of different things like you know replacing text and doing uh, more advanced stuff so we can actually look at you know some of these uh, payloads and it's always fun to learn by example but before we get too much further, now that we've you know unboxed our unit and we've typed in it and we've uh, gotten it into arming mode and checked out the loot or the you know key logs that it created, uh, the next step is actually to upgrade the device because out of the box the base functionality is there to do your keyboard recording and some basic payload functionality but if you want to unlock more advanced payload functionality and cloud c2 integration and so much more in the language file and things of that nature we need to go ahead and get upgraded to the latest version so no matter when you're watching this whether we're in quarantine or not um you're going to be able to uh, get the very latest and there may be even more features that I'm not even aware of here in uh, May of 2012. 2020. <laughs> 2020. 2012. Where am I? What? I've been in quarantine for too long. I'm losing it. All right. So let's go ahead and proceed with that. Here's how you do it. Basically, there's an upgrade HTML on the route here and that'll take you to a document on updating the key croc. So the steps are you download the latest firmware, connect the croc in arming mode. We already have that done. We copy the firmware to the croc, okay? And then we just unplug and replug the croc. All right, let's do that. Download the latest firmware. And I'm just gonna save this directly to the key croc right there on the root of the drive. And it's important to note that you do not want to extract the tar.gz file that it's downloading here because that's gonna mess everything up. So just be sure to follow the exact instructions here. If we want, we can go to downloads.hack5.org and come over to Keycroc and see the latest. And there's your SHA-256 checksum so you can validate that firmware. And with our download complete and our KC underscore FW 1.2457 at time of recording, this upgrade file is on the root of our drive. We just go ahead and safely eject this. And then we come over here to our Keycroc and unplug it and replug it. And after it starts booting there, indicated by those LEDs, it's gonna go into this police pattern, as we call it, this alternating red and blue LED. And at this point, the firmware is flashing. It's gonna take about 10 minutes, and it's important that during this process, you do not unplug the device. I mean, that goes for any time you're flashing firmware, because doing so is gonna render it completely inoperable. Uh, so we've got 10 minutes. During that time, I encourage you to scroll down here and find the rest of the Keycroc documentation because this is going to continue on with getting it online and getting it connected to Cloud C2 and more information about how payloads work and connecting to Serial Console as well as writing payloads. And those are all topics that I'm going to continue here on this series. So now let's just fast forward until our Keycroc is finished flashing. All right, the Keycroc firmware update is complete. If you weren't paying attention like I wasn't, uh, you may notice that the LED is off, and so I'm wondering, like, what's going on? But remember, if your USB keyboard, in this case a wireless nubbin, is attached, uh, it's going to be off, and you can just verify that by unplugging, and then the white LED comes on to show you, hey, no, no keyboard attached. All right, so just plug that back in, and let's get the rest of this set up, I don't know, on our Windows box. All right, now that this is in attack mode, which is its default boot mode, I could actually verify that by just switching over here to our Windows machine and on our keyboard, I can type hello and I get world. All right, fantastic. Now let's go ahead and put that guy into arming mode. So again, take your SIM card tool or your paper clip and pressing straight down for about one second, starts blinking blue and come back over to our Windows machine and in Explorer in just a moment there we go we get our D drive our key croc and we can verify its version by checking out version.txt there we go we're on 1.2475 at time of recording and just like before we can go into our loot and check out our character log which includes our previous character log as well as all of the new stuff. So you can actually see me doing GUI R there to pull up the uh, 
the run line and get into Notepad and then type hello. So that's uh, another thing to consider is whenever you're doing these upgrades, it's going to kind of append those upgrade files. So you may not necessarily lose a payload that you're working on, but best practice, of course, is to back up any work in progress that you may have on the device. And you may want to just delete everything off of the device before you copy over that firmware upgrade tar.gz or gz file. Um, in any event, there you go. So let's lastly get into the config.txt file, set this guy up for a little bit of Wi-Fi action before we wrap up for today's video. That's our Linux box. Okay, back over to our Windows box. Let's close this and head over to the root where we will find a config file. So this config.txt with its cute little uh, ASCII art of a crocodile uh, includes the options for setup. Now the major options are detailed below. Basically, we can enable or disable SSH and Wi-Fi, and there's also some DNS options as well. So let's go ahead and do just that. So the parameters are Wi-Fi underscore SSID and the name of the network. In my case, it's H5 underscore target, and then Wi-Fi underscore pass. And if your network doesn't have a password, you just omit this completely for open networks. Otherwise, your WPA PSK key goes here, and mine is test test. Don't ask. Uh, and then SSH enable. I like to enable SSH. It makes it easier for development. Uh, we can, if we want, set a DNS. If we want 1.1.1.1 .1 .1 .1 .1 or 8.8.8.8 or whatever you'd like, I'm just going to leave it as default. It'll get its DNS from DHCP. We're going to go ahead and save that file and close it. And as always, safely eject before unplugging. So that's safely ejected. I'll come over here unplug the key crock and plug it back in and there we go it's connected to our Wi-Fi network one thing that you might want to keep in mind as a pen tester is that you can configure it to connect to a Wi-Fi access point that you do as a soft AP on your phone and what I mean by that is say you set up your soft AP on your phone with you know a certain SSID and password put those values into your config.txt file and then whenever you return to the client site and spin up that AP on your phone it's going to go ahead and connect to you and if you have that SSH enable uh, option then you'll be able to SSH into the device and pull the loot or the key logs off of that over SCP just as you would any other uh, computer so that's a fun thing to consider and we're going to go ahead and get into all of those things like accessing it over SSH and serial and managing payloads in the next video in this series. Of course, if you have any questions on what we've covered today, please leave those in the comments below. And if you haven't already, check out the live streams Thursday nights. We're starting payload parties here on the Hack5 channel. I uh, hope to see you guys there. Until next time, I'm Darren Kitchen. Trust your technical lust. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.